use computer. There we go. We're all ready to go, folks. Here we go. Hi. How are you? This is our Monday program. We This is very casual. We don't have a big opening for it or anything like that. And uh, uh, I'm feeling, feeling pretty good today, you know. Um, we had some rainy weather over the weekend, and it was just, it drove me nuts. It drove me nuts. Anyway, let's bring in all the people that are waiting already to get on this little thing here. Boy, we, they keep coming here. Here comes um, Marjorie, and uh, let me see, Paula is out there. Hello, Paula, and hello to hello, uh, hello. Arlene Solis and uh, Charlie Wallace. Hey, that rhyme. Arlene Solis and... Charlie Wallace, and uh, also there's Lynn LaFrisco, and of course, of course, as always, Edward Berger. That's right. That's right. Boy, ah, God. If you had that voice, did you have that voice when you were a little kid? Uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there was a character, I think, on the R Gang comedies. Named Froggy, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and the, he was a kid who sounded just like you mm. right now. Uh huh. So my question is: Did you have this voice when you were younger, and were you Froggy? Uh, no, I wasn't Froggy. No. <laughs> Am I right, Charlie? You yeah. seem to remember Froggy. I remember or... Froggy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They call him Froggy because he had a. Mm. I won't say a funny voice because I don't want to upset you. No, you're not going to upset me. Okay, we're a very weird, funny voice. Okay. <laughs> I'll embellish on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, so uh, it's uh, Marjorie's here today. Hello, Marjorie. Um, uh, and let me let me announce that uh, our marriage has kind of come to an end. <laughs> um, because she's kicked me out of the bedroom. Oh. I'm now sleeping. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I'm now wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. I Let's am, I'm now a guest in this pop, house. Pop with the cane, Alex. Huh? Let's talk about the pop, pop, pop with your cane. Well, that's because I had a bad condition in which I needed a cane in order to walk from one place to the other. And you, when you came no into the bedroom, it woke me up you, you every no time. You have no sympathy. No sympathy yeah. whatsoever. Anyway, Are you sick, Marjorie? So, so I, huh? Are you sick? No, no, it's just sneezing. It's allergies, I'm sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I put the mute on because I was sneezing. <laughs> anyway, no, I had this bad, really terrible back pain, which was caused, I think, we had this horrible rain here. And it was very damp. And I, I had to miss one night of the show this week because I was in so much pain. And now it's not so okay. Now it's much better. I can lean down and things like that. But boy, it was, you know. But uh, I had to use the cane. And I, I use the cane when I'm walking out in the street, not because I need it, not because I I, I just I have it there uh, for comfort uh, for uh, in case I fall again, I have some kind of way to stop it, you know, uh, and uh, so that's the reason I use it because I had this fear of falling. But then I really needed it this week to walk around. And when I would come to bed at night, of course, the thumb, 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 thumb. <laughs> That's because you're such a light sleeper. <laughs> I I would have slept through that, you know. But well, <laughs> next time when you, when you next time you need a cane, I'll kick you out of the. Well, I can't. Well, you're already open. in the. You're already in the bedroom, and you banish me. I'm now a guest in our house. <laughs> I'm in the guest room. What, uh, Paula? Yeah, I I had to use a cane after my knee surgery, mm -hmm. and I found I I hated it, but. I also found that it was it could be a handy weapon in case anybody. Oh messes yeah, with me. oh yeah, and, and also nobody mess with me. But you know, like if you, you never. Want, if you're a Costco and you want somebody to get out of the way, <laughs> you know. But better yet, what you do is you rent one of those uh, motorized things they got there, oh. and then that with your cane becomes a deadly weapon because you're going around going, <laughs> "Get out of my way! I'm shopping. I've got a bad back. Leave me alone." Or you could be Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly. You, you, you kids, <laughs> you, you say you kids these days, you know. So <laughs> anyway, um, hello to Mike Chisholm. Hello, Mike. Hey guys, I missed yeah. you the past couple of weeks. It's great to hear. Yeah. To yeah, where were you? Uh, both, I think, were client meetings that just couldn't be 
any other time. This is and, not as important as a client meeting. <laughs> in my heart, it certainly is. But yeah, no. Um, yeah. Got to keep the lights on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you do. You do. Uh, what, 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 what again do you do you uh, work doing? You, you consult uh, something? Financial professional. So I, uh, you know, different types of insurances, life insurances, investments. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. Oh, and you help people with those things. I do. Well, yeah. While Try you're here, while I've got you here. Uh, yes, sir. I just looked at, I got this thing from, uh, uh, from our insurance, which is uh, our prescription insurance, which is ARP uh, and then uh, United Health ARP Walgreens. They added Walgreens to it. And they said, uh, here's the current prices, what they're going to be. They, our price went from forty dollars to eighty dollars. As of January first, we have to find what? a new. The provider. nerve of these people! Yep. How, how do you explain that? <laughs> well, as you know, I'm Canadian, and uh, the dr price of drugs up here are very, very different than the price of drugs down in the states. So, um, most of our most people who have like a like a prescription plan get eighty percent of their prescriptions paid for, but if not. If you don't have it and you go to Costco to get a prescription, many of those prescriptions are only like twenty to thirty dollars, kind of a thing. Yeah, you know, and there's high, good. there's higher end yeah. heads. Of but course, I mean, but, it, it's just, it's, it's just it, the colossal gall of these people. Jeez, Almighty, you know, antique middleman in the United States uh, in the insurance industry that goes, you know, and, and anytime there's a middleman in any industry, prices will go up. Of course. Yeah, but and but but a hundred percent. Yep. A hundred percent. When you look at inflation and what's happened, like I mean, I don't know about it is for you guys. Candy and I used to go to Costco, and for two weeks, we'd spend probably three hundred to five hundred dollars. Now we're spending minimum seven eight hundred dollars at Costco for two weeks, which just for the two of us. I don't really? know if it's the same there or not, but wow, um, wow. Inflation is real. And, and I mean, I've never seen it like this in our lifetime. I don't know about you guys. but Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, okay, so there's inflation. All right. Yep. I'll, I'll buy that. Somebody like the insurance company is using this, that as an excuse to raise the prices, you know, and that's that, 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 that they're literally, what's the word I'm looking for here? Gouging. Uh, gouging. Price gouging. Yeah. Pri yeah. Price gouging. I mean, uh, yeah, I guess they can raise it to whatever they want to. They could make it eight hundred dollars a month if they want to. That's that's their own their you know, it's the prescription drug thing. But yeah. I mean, where's in fact, you know, this still falls kind of under Medicare uh, I, to a certain extent. I don't know where where's the government on this. I mean, this is just yeah, you can't uh, negotiate with the insurance companies. A hundred percent. Yeah, our our prescription insurance is going up. You know, and who's gonna who's gonna be affected by this? This is gonna be old people are gonna be affected. Seniors, absolutely. Can they afford to have their price doubled? So why don't you say, hey, you know, we're not gonna do this because it, it it's still our bottom line is gonna be just fine. Uh, you know, we'll raise it ten bucks. You know, but our 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 bottom line is gonna be okay. They just want to make a fucking fortune. Yep. Now, how dare they? You know, it's horrible. Go after a poor old person like me <laughs> and Marjorie. Look at, give him a pathetic face, Marjorie. <laughs> That's not a pathetic face. Hey, look like Stan Laurel for a second. <laughs> yeah, uh, but anyway. So I mean, it's just we have to find a new plan by January. I don't think you get a new plan that's cheaper. I think they probably all jump their prices like that. Yeah, I mean, but. I mean, and, and this is under ARP, which is, you know, supposed to be the old people's thing. They they they, they look for benefits for old people and the, their own plan is going up 100%. Give me well, and it's funny because there's probably a wing of that same company that is trying to go out and find new customers. And for new customers, they have different, yeah. you know, it's 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 funny how that works, right? For the established ones, they bring everything up, but if there's a another part that's trying to, you know, yeah, make new yeah. deals with new employers or whatever. Well, I've know. had that happen. You know, that happens with like the uh, the things that are jumping up like crazy are all those uh, 
you know, pay per view, pay, pay or uh, things. You oh, know, that's Netflix horrible. Yep. And so yep. on. And um, they've all gone up. Yep. I mean, our Hulu, although we have an expensive plan because we have the Hulu that, where we get all the TV stations and stuff, uh, it's going up $7 a month. So I said to somebody, $7, they said a year. I said, no, a month. And then uh, what else is going up? Uh, all, well, all of them are going up. They've all gone up. Streaming services. They've yeah, all they gone up. Yeah, and it's yeah. because they all made a bad bet. They all thought the idea of having a streaming service was going to make them a bundle. And they suddenly found out there were costs with doing that. You know the smart company was? It turns out I read, a, read an article on this. The smart company in all of this was Sony, who never started a streaming service. They just they, lease all their properties. They out lease the all, this, all the, all the uh, property that they have out to Netflix and out to you know Hulu and, and whatever. Yep. And they're doing just fine. So a lot of these companies who started because they had just an inventory of their own movies would have done better by selling those movies to Netflix and, you know, Hulu and a few of those, but no, you know, so uh, they're all going to collapse and people are going to start, you know, he, one thing we can do, you and I can do to fight this is just selectively use sign on and sign off of these services. If you see that Netflix has a bunch of shows you want to watch, subscribe to Netflix. Watch them all before the month is over and then get rid of them. Cancel it. Cancel them. And then you see, oh, Disney's got a whole bunch of stuff. Go over and use Disney. You know, in other words, to go ping pong back and forth, it's going to drive them crazy to begin with because, you know, but I mean, that's the way to fight the battle on this thing. I would think that they would then come up with a penalty for canceling. I'm sure they will. But, well, but that they would do. They've already, you know. Yeah. They, they're already trying to prevent me from saying, uh, well, hey, Paula, you can use my Disney account. Yeah. You know, I uh, just finally cut the cord two weeks ago from Comcast. I was paying $259 a month. Yeah. People yeah. had a deal. It's $30 a month. And I got YouTube TV. So it's costing me like 60 bucks a month for what was costing me 250 before. Yeah. Well, and the, only, the only reason I went over to Hulu for that, the only reason I went to Hulu for that was because they also give us the Disney Channel. And you know, Disney Plus, they give us a Hulu and they give us uh, uh, ESPN Plus, which we only use once a year when Marjorie watches tennis. No, but football. Football People gives me Netflix yeah. for free, so that's good. So yeah, yeah that's, that's enough. I don't need all that stuff. Yeah, well, it's right. You're right. You're absolutely right. You know, but oh, I had, I cut the cord finally. And it took me a while to do it, to have the nerve to do it. Yes, I mean, it, mainly because I didn't know if Marjorie could be on board with it. She would go, oh, I can't find this and I can't make it work this way and so on. But she found it incredibly easy to use. Mm -hmm. and, and now she you don't even miss the cable, do you? No, not at and all. There's never been a moment where we went, yeah, I wish we had cable in order to get that. <laughs> you know. Not for 750 bucks a month. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh well, I was paying uh, maybe about two fifty a month, but that was my, with my high speed internet. Do you have a high speed internet? Yes, it comes. It's five G high speed internet. That's thirty. Well, you have five G. You have five G. I have the uh, you know the fiber optic. Uh, uh, it comes in here and. Yeah, so it's all I, over the internet. Everything comes in. Like what I'm doing here. I, I put it up my private parts, and I get to see TV for free. <laughs> <laughs> They nail you for uh for upload like i pay extra for my fiber up here in canada because um i upload a certain amount from because it's a podcast right each one is like you know gigs hey, no we don't i don't i it's unlimited yeah yeah well that's what i pay for too but it costs extra for the unlimited versus the the other plan where it's fiber it's it's fast it's great for streaming and all that but I got to go to the higher plan for uploading. They don't do that down I, there. I never had a plan for uploading. No. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, I I had either had internet access or not. Hmm. But the other thing I hated is I saw they sent me this thing, you know, uh, Verizon saying, you know what you can do? You can subscribe now to our two. Um, what is it? Two two meg two gig service. Hmm. In other words, instead of one gigabyte. It's two gigabytes, twice as fast. You'll love it. 
So I go on, I figure how much, how much more, uh, $30 more a month? Uh, you know, it might be worth it to me because I have to upload and download stuff and I want to do it really fast. And if I can yep. do it really fast, uh, it just it'll be better. Yep. So maybe it's worth $30 to me. So I then start filling out all the things to go to the, you know, the higher rate, the higher bandwidth. And, and uh, I get to the very end and it says, you know, it will be now 219, uh, excuse me, $119 a month. Okay. Mm -hmm. total. And I go, good. And then right under it, and this, they never did this in any of the, along the way where I was checking boxes and doing things to get to where I was. There's a little sign at the very bottom, right? It says $149 setup fee. Oh. Oh. I went and I call I called him. I said, what's with this $149 setup fee? And you don't tell us that until we get to the very end. Yeah. They said, oh well, you know, we have to send somebody out to your house to install a new box oh. and make sure all works. And I went, really? You can't just turn get me up to two gigabytes there? Of course they can. <laughs> of course they can. I gotta get a new box. I've already got a new new box they sent me. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just insane. And again, the same company has a wing, which are going out and trying to get Comcast customers to come over and they're going to give them free this and free that and free this and free installation yeah. and all of that. Yet for the for the guy like you that's been there, they won't, yeah. Yeah, you know, but, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I remember when I joined Verizon, I had to pay an installation fee because they had sure. to send people out to the house. God forbid they should have to deal with human beings directly. You know, that that costs you more. Yeah. We had to send the boxes back, remember? Oh, yeah, we had to go. We went down to uh, Whole Foods and returned all our boxes when we got rid of the, uh, uh, you know. Why Whole the, Foods? Huh? Well, Why actually, Whole actually, Foods? I think we did we go there? Did we go down to the. Uh, I think we went to UPS. We went to UPS? Street. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. UPS. Yeah. Whole Foods is for anything that's Amazon. <laughs> like I want to I want to I want to return a uh, a hard drive I got that failed on me after three months. Right. Well, if I want to return it, I have to walk all the way down to Whole Foods. Mm. And right now, I don't know if I can walk to Whole Foods. <laughs> yeah, I'm still getting my strength back. But I mean, it. it uh um, they, they make it harder and harder for you as a customer to have to deal directly with the company. You know, oh, you can chat with somebody. You ever go through that? Yeah. You ever use the chat? Like, I actually kind of like that. I'm okay huh? with the chat window. If, as long as I'm talking to a human and not a robot and they're, they're local-ish, um, I'm usually, I'm okay with that. I kind of, I kind of groove on that a little bit. No, but the, here's what's with the chat. If I if I'm they call up Verizon, I just talk to somebody. Well, here's my problem. Okay, well, well, did you uh, jiggle this or did you do that or you know blah blah blah? Let me look at your file. Blah 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 blah. Fine. Now I go to chat. It's like, what's your name? You type in your name, <laughs> and then you wait thirty seconds. And you, where do you live? And you're typing where you live, right? It's another 30 seconds before he writes back to you or she writes back to you. And before you're through, you're there for like an hour and you've done something that you could have done in five minutes talking to somebody. And that's why I find that chat thing so annoying. Probably because they're usually answering about eight other people at the same time. At the same time, yeah. 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 And I, uh, and it's amazing because. They've got all their stuff, and they go, so what is the problem exactly? Well, do you have cable? Do you have fiber? Yes, I do. Why do you think I'm calling you? you know, I mean, it's just maddening. Is it raining at your house? Yeah, well, I love, the, I love the things where before you can get to a person, you have to answer a whole bunch of questions. And then when you answer all those questions and they get you to a live person, guess what the first thing is they do? They What's answer the all those questions oh, again. That's right. That's right. That's a pain in the ass. Yeah, why? Yeah, somebody should go into these companies and clean that whole process up so people are happy. 
what was it that I that I was saying the other day that I we uh, if somebody had and they they wanted something but they couldn't get it, it, it they put them through too much work to get something done so they just gave up on it and all he wanted to do was spend money with the company yep. you know but he was he just gave up on all the hoops he had to jump through to get something done so anyway i oh look there's and there's mandy she's working she's sorting papers so that's what that's what work looks like oh wow okay yeah uh, <laughs> <working. laughs> it, it, mister <laughs> cruise for two weeks oh yeah what'd you say for two weeks i said mister i've been on a cruise for two weeks <laughs> Oh, oh, yes, he's been on a cruise for two weeks. Oh, yeah. Gee, now you're getting nasty with Len, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. Brian's not here. So. Yeah. Yeah, he's not Brian's here to pick on here. you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have never been nasty to Brian in my life. That I know. A... I know. It's just funny. I know. Len, your face is so red. You know, you guys say that every week, but it yeah. wasn't this week. But it it's really this is. Camera. It's this damn camera. Did you get <laughs> sunburn on your cruise no not at all i'm gonna i'm gonna join on another camera and see what uh see what when you know what it might be you probably don't have any lighting on you and no i have nothing it's, it's dark in here yeah and, and that's probably why it looks that way if you had a light like i do here you would look pale like i do <laughs> well uh, you would look more pale than i do when i have the lights off I, you know. <laughs> where was your cruise then um, vancouver canada to la Oh, nice. I don't know why, why you would do that. Because she, my wife's never been to the Pacific Northwest, and yeah. um, and I just wanted to cruise. I'll go on anything. So why don't you just fly up to the Pacific Northwest, rent a car, and drive around? <laughs> because they didn't feed me and let me drink all I could drink for a week. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, you can get oh, no, fed. No. You can get fed without going on a ship. All right. That was cut. That's what, wives, really, that's what wives are for, don't you uh, remember? We met a really nice couple. We had a really nice time. It was relaxing and it was wonderful. And I'm sorry I didn't get to see you, Mike. <laughs> yeah, too. That would have been fun. Did you have fun in Vancouver? Yeah, uh, no, we just landed the night before and drove to the port the next morning. So didn't well, what's, just what's fun to do in Vancouver? Yeah, I don't know. What is there to do? In Vancouver? <laughs> I mean, it depends how outdoorsy you are. Like, compare Stanley Park and Central Park. I mean, they're very different parts, but they're they're both gigantic. Stanley it's Park. A nice, it's a beautiful town. There's water everywhere. You know, yeah. it's, it's very nice. Let's call yeah, it flooding. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that, that's New York, right? By the way, I gotta tell you. Yeah, I gotta tell you. If you say there isn't there isn't global warming. Yeah. You know, I mean, we we I mean, I've been in the subways when we've had a heavy rain and that stuff has come down into the subways. But the pictures I saw were nothing like I went through. You know, it was just horrible here. The subways, the roads were closed. Wow. Yeah. But what happened to you specifically? What did it did it reach up to where you were? No, it didn't reach up to the eighth floor. No, just up to my book. Well, I don't mean the eighth floor. I mean 116th <laughs> Street. <laughs> If our apartment starts to flood out, if our apartment starts to flood out, it's either because the windows are open, <laughs> or or or, or uh, uh, it's really a flood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, aren't you on like the ninth floor or something? If it floods eighth up there, floor. that's a eighth that's floor. A eighth floor. Yeah. Did you know what was going on at the time? Yes, I couldn't go out for days. It was raining so much. I didn't, but I knew that every bone in my body ached. Mine too. From the day. Just horrible. Just terrible. We guys got no snow last year, so maybe you're going to get a chitlow this year. They, <laughs> they say the winter is going to be bad. You know something? I haven't. I haven't. Accent. You know, when I lived in New York the first time, we had some really hella snowstorms. I mean, you know, when the snow really piled up and was thick, and you know, if you jumped into it, you're up to your neck. I mean, it was pretty, pretty vile. And uh, yet, in the, since I've been back here, I've never seen a snowstorm like that. Hmm. It's like the weather has precipitated; it has changed. There's no question about it. So, I mean, we didn't get we got hardly any snow last year, right? We're going to get cold this year. A lot of. Oh cold temperature good uh, yeah. it's better now though right 
What? Like you guys you guys are okay now from a flood perspective, right? In New York? No. Is it really oh, is it really bad? I'm flying in for three nights. I'm coming in this week. And is it well, like unless we have rain, you'll be fine. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, well, here's here's what those airports and stuff because i saw some of those videos too alex and i'm like oh shit my trip well the, the problem is is the when the subways were built they were built literally very fast in fact uh the first subway which went all the way up to the top of manhattan and down all the way to the uh, bottom of manhattan took about a year and all they did was dig a trench okay mm. And then they put in the rails and they put in the whatever they needed down there, the infrastructure. And then how did they cover the trench? With grading. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So there in New York, as you walk down the, the uh, especially on a cold day, as you walk down the, uh, the street, uh, this hot steam is coming out of the grading because it's warm because the grading is and so what happens when it yeah, Marilyn, Mon Marilyn Monroe found that out right, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> when it really floods when it really floods it all goes down those grates and that the subways then get flooded out so that's what happens and then of course it's on the rails and the rails are electricity and they don't work and yeah, 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 yeah. and the trains and the highways they were all closed yeah. down now, the new subways don't have that situation, but it took them forever to build them because they didn't dig a trench. Yeah. So, so anyway, that's that's, uh, that's our open story. again, right? Huh? Things are open again, right? We're Things flying in on Thursday. Uh, yeah, I don't, think, I don't think much closed for a long time at all here. Okay. But we're going to close it because we know you're coming. <laughs> <laughs> so what do, you, what do you have to do in New York? Um, I'm coming for uh, Rupert G's retirement party. Yes, he's he's retiring, and Worldwide Pants is putting on a party for him, and I got invited, to it, so I'm coming in for that. Yeah, and then yeah, so yeah, good. Um, uh, it, it, Rupert G was the guy who owned the deli next door to the, or actually in the theater. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's right in, attached to the building, and he uh, he is just in the process of selling it and retiring and uh so it might be the last time that you know uh letterman's company does anything official at that theater ever oh, oh you mean they're going to go in and do it at the theater uh, well, I, i'm not exactly sure it's happening there i'm not exactly sure the logistics of the whole thing i just know that i'm coming to it yeah yeah but it's it's there and i think they're maybe cordoning off part of 53rd street um, yeah. Now people are saying, "Well, Rupert G. Who was he?" And he was a guy who owned the delicatessen, and, and Dave would do a lot of bits with him, right? Yeah, he's on the show. Uh, uh, well, Ten percent. What? Well, wait a minute. Uh, our friend Don, Don Giller has just put together a. Uh, you probably did you see it? Yeah, great. Have you seen it? Oh yeah, I haven't. It's terrific. Said anything about it. Yeah, yeah, it's great. He but he went back and he thought that he had been on about two hundred and twenty-five times. And he went through everything, went through his files, turned out to be 445 appearances on Letterman. Yeah. And he took every one of those appearances and took a shot from them. It took him two oh. days to do this, shot from every one of them, and put them end to end to music. Uh, you know, Giller <laughs> has to find something else to do with his life. <laughs> <Jesus almighty. laughs> But uh, I just saw it uh, this afternoon, and I went, "Wow, that's that's you know that's some nice work." You know? yep. So, uh, but I hope Giller gets invited to the party, but I doubt if he will. Oh no, he's been invited. Oh, he has been invited. Oh yeah, but he won't leave his it's apartment no. anyway. <laughs> huh? He won't leave his apartment. Yeah. <laughs> well, he probably won't go. But uh, yeah. uh, I know. I hope he does. I really hope he does. But yeah. Well, nobody invited me, but then again, those people don't know who I am. So. Oh, tell me about Lori and the thing out in California. Oh, this is a great story. This is, this a is great the best story. story in the world. Oh, you're yeah, all, I wanted to hear all, about it. You're all familiar with Lori Thompson. Right? Mm -hmm. I talk to her every now and then on the nighttime show. She was my newswoman on the radio show in San Francisco and, and kind of my aide de camp. She was kind of the, she had a, uh, I, I made the station start billing the show as Alex Bennett with Lori Thompson so that she would get a credit 
And and so we've been friends for years. So now we do this stuff together. And she tells me there's there's this uh, bit where they're having a reunion for Live 105 in San Francisco. Do you want? Mm-hmm. Are you going to go? Do you want to go? And I went. Well, nobody invited me. She said, Well, I'm inviting you because that they they told people to tell people and so on and so forth. And I went. Well, it's a little late for me to make arrangements. And plus, I don't know where the exit is to New York City. So. <laughs> So she said, okay, well, I, I, I'm going to go. And when, we, when I get there during the party, I will call you by FaceTime and everybody can say hello to you and you can say hello to them. And I went, good idea. Terrific. So I'm sitting around, I'm waiting on Saturday night between uh, seven and nine, my time. And I'm waiting for a call. And finally, I do get a call about eight, about 830. And it's from her. And I said, ah, you're calling, finally. And she says, well, I'm not calling from the party. Uh Uh-oh. I said, why? She said, I'm a week early. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) I said, well, you've certainly lived up to your reputation. (laughs) I had thought that it was, uh, yeah, I, I thought it was like in October something. Oh, but not no. the first. That would have been the f- September thirtieth, right? She would have. Th- she thought it was September. I thought it was in October because I've seen some ads for it or whatever. She flew this all the way weekend. from uh, where did she fall? Uh, Florida. Florida, yeah. Oh no! <laughs> to, to go to this thing and then found out it's next week. Is she, oh is she man! Staying, is she or did she go home? Well, no, she's going to go home, but before she went, she's going to go see a lot of the people that would have been at the party. I said, oh. what you should do is just kind of consider it your own reunion and then go see all these people, you know, and, and have something to do with them. Wow. Well, she, ought to, she ought to get some good miles on it and just re- turn around and go back. <laughs> <laughs> well, just make sure you have the right week. Uh, right. Yeah, when you're coming down to New York. So, yeah. You, know, you don't want to have that happen to you. Anyway. yeah so anyway so we, we and marjorie with her you were terrible with the weather too you was just oh my back my knee and there's nothing you can do to prevent it you know i get do, do if you get a dehumidifier will that help no probably not what if you get a humidifier it's, it's, will it's that help pressure. Isn't pressure. It pressure yeah exactly it's pressure oh there's no way to change barometric pressure in no, your house. It happens all the time for me <laughs> Maybe I get a hyperbaric chamber. There you go. Well, that will that will help. San Francisco pretty Bay expensive. Area. <laughs> the Bay Area is no place to live if you have if if you have arthritis and things like that. Yep. Because it's really you know it's the dampest place in the world. I mean that's the, plus you got I, the ocean there. I kept telling people as I was growing up, "Oh, my bones are green," because <laughs> I, I grew up in San Francisco and it's so damp all the time. <laughs> And uh, and it was, it was the, the ocean is close by and it's constantly changing and there's so many microclimates and everything else out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, it uh, it, it 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 does affect you, uh, and you have a lot of spinal problems and things like that. So, you know. yeah. What what town are you in, Kevin? I'm down uh, south of Gilroy and Hollister. Mm. Yeah, down there with the garlic. Yeah, south yeah. of it can still it's, smell. Well, there's an area. There's a, a what? What's the town that has all the garlic? Uh, Gilroy. Gilroy, and uh, they they have a garlic festival every year down there. Yeah, not they anymore. used to. Yeah, yeah not they anymore. Order. They no. got rid of it. Why? No, since the shooting. There was a shooting up there. There was a shooting. shooting at the garlic festival. You don't yeah. remember that? I told you all about it. Yeah, it was it was a big deal. It was one of the mass shootings that they had like uh, three, four years ago. Wow. Yeah. You know, what, 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 how does someone. I was on that weekend. <clears throat> you know something? There's a garlic festival. I think I'm going to go shoot people. That's you know, what happened. A garlic Stuck festival in... for crying out loud. Is there no san- sanity in this world? Yep. Is there no place you can just leave it alone? Yep. It was like four people killed, I think. The guy cut through the fence in the back and went oh, in there and opened up. Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah, well. It was a big moneymaker for him for charity, and then they shut it down, and they couldn't get insurance and everything else. So, And now Stockton has kind of taken over the, mm-hmm. the name because uh-huh. they claim that it's all processed out there anyway. So 
now they've started what they call a garlic festival out there and it's slowly, oh really oh okay well there is a garlic slowly festival. gaining but that's 120 miles away so yeah yeah wow that's so so when I was for, for costco i used to do uh the bay area a little bit and that area included stockton stockton was a pretty rough place if i remember it correctly oh yeah, yeah. it's a rough yeah. place yeah yeah um but anyway so i you know uh you guys talk but yes oh oh listen look she's got her arm up yes what mandy uh, i have to go i thought <laughs> <laughs> i was on mute sorry i've not been on mute um yeah i have to go so I just okay, say yeah. okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll clear, miss you Brian. we'll miss you and we'll hopefully we'll see you next week you should. And, uh, the best okay. to you, the best to your daughter. Hope hope she's liking New York. Yeah, I was gonna say when y'all were talking about the rain, when I texted her about it, she said, um, like I was like, Oh, I'm so sorry. It's you know, this I've been watching on the news. And she just all she's responded, Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> all yeah. she said. Okay. Yeah, all we saw of the floods was yeah. the news. See you later, kiddo. Bye, Bye, Mandy. Bye. There goes Mandy. In case you don't know who Mandy is, she's Brian's nemesis. And Brian isn't calling today, so whatever. The coast is clear, Brian. Come on on now. Smallest amount of people we've had uh, uh, in a while, you know, but who knows? Anyway, so um, um, what else is happening? Anything? Oh, all the TV shows are coming back. Yeah, the writer strike's over. Well, you know what amazes me? Have you watched the shows that are coming back? Like Family Guy was back last night. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? It's I guess weird. they I guess they just held on to it yeah. during the writer's strike. Well, of course, this is kind of the time for the new season to start anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they have months. I, of I, I think they year. held back, you know, and then Bill Maher was on the other night and looks like his writers have been writing all during the strike while they were at home, you know, and uh, uh, then uh, uh, John, Jonathan. and that's a much more complicated show from a writing standpoint. Um, I keep seeing a lot of non-scripted stuff coming out too, game shows and things like that. Well, that, yeah, that they were course. planning on, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. You know what the most popular show on broadcast is right now? No. Hmm. Yellowstone. Oh, huh? yeah. Repeats of Yellowstone. It's all right. I haven't watched it, so I'm starting to watch it now. Right. They're, they're, they're cutting it off two a week. So, yeah. you know, hell, they got six seasons of that show. Yeah. So, I mean, that was how they were going to get themselves through this whole thing was by starting to use shows that they had run on, uh, on you know, these pace situations. Anyway, so... Um, but uh, you know they can't. All the shows, all the shows are coming back tonight. I guess, I guess Kimmel starts tonight, and Fallon and Colbert. And John um, Oliver was uh, last Oliver. night. Yeah. yeah, right. I didn't know there was a new Oliver last night. I got to watch that. That's great. Yeah. I thought he was right. this Sunday. It was very good. I bet. Have you guys heard Strike Force Five? Did you guys hear that the podcast they all did? Who? No. No. Well, Coolest thing. So uh, Fallon, Colbert, Kimmel, Oliver, and Seth Myers all did a podcast together to raise money for all their staffs. Called it Strike Force mm -hmm. Five. They did, and uh, last Friday, episode nine came out, and Letterman was on. And two episodes before that, John Stewart was on, and they're fantastic. Listening to these guys go back and forth on things, it's a uh, highly recommended. I have to go. How much did they raise? <laughs> They're, 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 they're being quiet about how much they raised, but it seems like um, Ryan Reynolds companies came on board, Mint Mobile and Aviation Gin and all the stuff Ryan Reynolds does. And it seems like they, he was giving them a lot of money as title sponsor because they were doing commercials in them for him and, and, and making fun of them and, and just having where, a lot of fun. Where was this on YouTube? Uh, you can see it on YouTube and all the other podcast platforms. Oh, yeah. I'll look it up. It, it sounds interesting because uh, yeah. the thing that bothered me about this, these strikes was that the, the yeah, I uh, sympathize with the strikers, but what the strike did was make people who work these shows who had nothing to do with those unions 
the you know, people who costumers and makeup people and and then you also get the guy down the street with the uh, the roach coach you yeah. know who's trying to make money there Th that they were all out of work they all had to pay their bills during that at that time and the strike it did not enable them to do that yeah and uh, i don't know how much the strike was paying their strikers the people who were doing the striking but um if they weren't paying them anything then there were just a lot of people losing money and again uh, john oliver said it best last night when he said this was a strike that if they had just given in the first day to what they've given into now would have been over in one day that's yep. usually what it is though huh it's usually like that, isn't it? I mean, it seems so. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. Just like the country's budget. <laughs> oh, Jesus, don't start. <laughs> yeah, not, well, you talk about budget. Like, you think about all these corporations that now own these broadcast companies, and 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 they are bottom line, they're, they're month to month or quarter to quarter. They literally went through almost an entire quarter of not having to produce new stuff. How much did that save them? We're now in a new fiscal quarter. There's probably all sorts of, you know, mm. internal politics to do with this. Um, it's and it's maddening for the poor creatives who are just trying to, you know, make a living doing what they're doing. Yeah. Did we lose somebody besides Mandy? No. No. Okay. Because I thought we had more than than this uh, without Mandy. But yeah, yeah. But anyway, I'm I'm happy that that strike is over. And now the SAG after has to get over. Uh, and. Uh, Again, you know, I mean, SAG after I, it's, it's, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm really mixed about this because I, I consider my profession, um, a, tr a, a not a trade, but a, a, a an art. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the, the trouble is with our union, um, they, it, it's considered, they consider themselves like a labor union. And I never saw anybody in my business break a sweat, <laughs> except when the ratings came out, you know, yeah. otherwise you never broke a sweat. And I think about our unions should be considered guilds. Okay. Because artists are in guilds yeah. uh, and yet we don't consider it a guild. No, I remember been... my mother, my mother worked for Agba, which was mm -hmm. the American guild of variety artists. Well, the word guild is in there. And there's no guild in any of this. And well, it's the WPA though, it's Writers Guild of America, isn't it? It's oh yeah, it is the Writers Guild. You're right. You're right. But the actors though, no, they're yeah. more on that is the yeah. production types. Well, we uh, we use the word artist at the end. You know, what kind of artists are we? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's ridiculous. But uh, anyway, so any what else is happening out there that we could talk about? Non yes, yes, uh, Paula. Yeah, um, I I discovered um, uh, a um, a series on Netflix that I think is uh, is promising. It's called Night Agent. Do you know about it? Night Agent. I, we we watched that. I think didn't we, Marjorie? I don't know. You know, we watch so much stuff you forget <laughs> what you watch. I think we saw Night Agent. Yeah. So, it's a spy thing. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, I just discovered it. I, it, it, I, it's I, it's I about, was, about, about an agent who's sitting by a, a, telephone, a telephone waiting yeah, for yeah. the ring. Yeah. I've seen that too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you, you have? It's you been around for a while. Yeah, I liked it. It's okay. You know, it was all right. Um, what What are we watching? I'm watching this thing V. What is the thing? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's about a, it's about a college for superheroes. Oh, well, but yeah, no, thank you, Paul. <laughs> no, but Marjorie's actually in beginning to enjoy it. To tell you no, I'm truth. watching it because it's something we can watch together. No, no, you always use that as the excuse, but well, you to admit that you you after you watch the last episode, you episode, that last <laughs> episode. You said that you were you enjoyed it. I don't remember saying that. I know you don't remember saying it. <laughs> you, you remember. I'll have to sleep with you at night and remind you of things while you. <laughs> <laughs> 
But she since you're now just a guest in this apartment house. You can come back in as long as you don't use the fucking cane. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what the bop, bop, bop. <laughs> a three what in the morning. If, what if suddenly things went I wonders bad. why I woke up. Say these blisters on my leg got really bad and they had to amputate. What do you want me to do? Crawl into the bedroom? Get to an electric wheelchair. <laughs> oh, the, like that wouldn't make noise coming into the bedroom. Yeah. My husband had his knee replaced. Earlier this year, who Walker? Yeah, and I could just hear bump, bump, bump mm -hmm. coming down the hallway. Closer he came, the more agitated I got. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Charlene. Thank you. Well, that's certainly sympathy. <laughs> I'm a terrible. I'm a bad nurse. I'm not a good nurse. You're not a good all. nurse. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> Marjorie's not terribly good either. You know, um, <laughs> hey, hey, okay. Right, so, well, excuse me, folks. I just got the signal. We got one minute left. <laughs> <laughs> so, Charlene and, and Marjorie, okay. So, you don't like the sound of the, the cane. Are you also uh, of that personality At that three when in you the hear morning, Mike? No, no, no I hear you. Wake you up. I hear you. Are you also the type, because my wife is this very, very much. If I'm crunching a carrot or a potato chip or something like that, it drives mm. her up the wall. Are you that as- Three in the morning, you're jumping on a potato chip in bed? <laughs> in bed? Well, on a, <laughs> no, but on he's a good saying night. That's a match for divorce, for God's sake. <laughs> well, I feel, I feel kind of marginalized. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go again. I can't help it if my back's killing me. <laughs> don't even go there, Alex. What do you mean, don't even go there? I know you've got a bad back, too. My bad. Yeah. Back, my back's worse than your back. <laughs> At least if you had a scooter, you could pick her up from the hospital. No, I agree. Her oh, back Jesus. is oh, worse don't my stop. back. Oh, <laughs> He's never going to live that one down. Oh. Marjorie, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know... I have more than made up for that. I mean, no, you when, we, when we were in Europe, <laughs> I practically carried you around. You went from walking to mm. uh, to um, crutches. To crutches, and then you even worse than that, around. we had to. They had to. They, she went on an airplane, and they actually had to put her on first. But what they did is they loaded her in on one of these things that went up like this, oh. and then wheeled her into the uh, into the plane. Jeez. So. I mean, we got preferred seating. That was very nice, but you know, um, I mean, there was an advantage too, Marjorie, if you remember, because we just zipped through TSA. Yeah, that's true. Because you were in a wheelchair, you know. But I was wheeling you around, and, and no, you weren't. Yes, I was. <laughs> Not. Boy, how you forget. I wasn't in a wheelchair. Yeah, in, you in were in a wheelchair house. when we got into the airport. We're going to the, into the airplane. They wheeled you from, I think, the front of the uh, the gate. Here's my oh. violin. <laughs> I'm talking about you, not me. If you want I'm to talk about you for yourself, but I mean, I was good. I was what? What? I boy. All know. right, mom and dad, quit fighting. <laughs> Guest room, Alex. Guest like, room. Like a line in Seinfeld. Boy, did your mother do a, a, a number on you. <laughs> Nah. But, <laughs> I'm gonna have some coffee here. Um, but anyway, so um uh I, so anyway, I anybody who wants to come visit me, come see me in the in the guest room. <laughs> come back and visit me. I'm back there. Uh it feels like it's getting to feel like a cell. It really is. Because it's not a big, it's not a big bedroom. And well, how many like, hours a day do you spend in your office there, Alex? Um, not as much as you would think. Well, you have two offices, one in the guest room you made into an office. No, I, uh -huh. I simply put up a separate computer there in case we ever need to use another machine to do the show, you know, uh, but I've never had to use it. But, uh, and I use that occasionally if I'm in there, uh, and I need to find something on the, on the web, I, you know, I pop onto those computers, but, uh, the, the, you know, 
it's just they're just there you know yeah uh, but so anyway anything else you're going to do down here uh when you're in new york uh mike uh it's it's a really quick visit so it looks like going to colbert on thursday and then a couple of the guys who were holdovers from D Dave's production are going to take me around and tour me through the um, the production offices and the and, and stuff. And then um, Friday is the uh, is the party for Rupert. And then Saturday, I think I'm going out with O'Donnell and Young and maybe Steve Weiner. I'm not sure exactly yet. And then fly home Sunday, so oh, it's okay. a quick quick deal. And then Candy and I'll walk around. Uh, as much as we can we want to eat little italy and a couple other things too so oh okay yeah, yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty hectic but i also want to be there in case they need setup like because you know as you know i'm trying to ingratiate myself into the worldwide pants world a little bit so if, if they need help setting things up and all that i'm i'm willing to do that i'm just very very excited about it and i'm happy for rupert you're happy that he's retiring Oh, just this next phase of his life. I mean, I'm sad that he won't be there. It's a New York fixture that's kind of going away, which is sad. He's been 30, 32, 33 years they've been doing it. And, uh, but I'm happy for him that he gets to move on to a new phase for sure. Yeah. What's he going to do? Uh, his girlfriend lives in Florida. And, and so uh, we're all hanging out with him after Colbert. And so, so he's going to spend some time down there. She's got a house in Greece. They'll be going over back and forth there and then he still has his place in new york so i think he's he's gonna just pace of life will change a little bit when he's yeah. running that how old is he how old is he because we never and you never could really tell he always looked kind of young and he still looks tremendous i think i think he's in his 60s now i think he's mid 60s mm -hmm. where he, yeah but okay he really, so he's he's of re retirement age yeah oh yeah if you want to retire at that age i never did <laughs> That's right. And his, a part of it is that his business partner, uh, May, is, is, is wanting to, to, to relocate. And, and so part of it was facilitated with that as well. It's not just Rupert who owns the daily, it's May as well. Yeah. Well, it's nice they're holding a big a goodbye for him. Absolutely. He's, um, a very, he's a very significant part of that show. Yeah. 10% of all late shows Rupert was on. Like, that's a crazy stat when you look at it that way. I never thought of it that way. 450, yeah. something like that, 445, I think. Was the number Once I saw. every two weeks or so. Huh? Wow. Yeah. 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 And I mean, it, it was, there were some years where it was a lot more than others, but like uh, Don, he did as, you know, his organization is unbelievable. And so he's got a PDF and he has all the dates and it's uh, all the different years. Like the last year, I think it was only five times. And this other years, it was 30 something times, but still consistent every year. Did he have to be a member of uh, our union? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, with all so, those yeah. yeah. The staff would so talk he's about... he's probably going to get better retirement than I got. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Free sandwiches for the rest of his life. Yeah, free sandwiches for the rest of his life. No, because I, I you know, I, I, I've I, always been a member of, of AFTRA, uh, but I only worked under it on just a couple of radio stations, and that was it. And that's all I got my, for the most part, my retirement from that and a few commercials here and there and things like that. But, you know, if he did, if he did 10% of the Letterman shows, he's got to get a retirement that's higher than mine. And I'm getting about a grand a month or something. Yeah. It's really interesting talking to the crew who would be featured on the show. I always ask the questions about that because I, I, I know nothing about the unions. Mm -hmm. And 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 it, it, if they had more than three lines, they were considered a principal. And if you were a principal, you were in a higher. It was reported differently, and you got paid more money. But it also got reported like. And so Rupert's segments, every single one of them, he would have been. A oh principal. yeah, no, no it's, more, like, it's more. It's more. So than three lines. was that yeah. was that whole thing was that set up or would he? Because he, I remember when it first started, and did he just go in there and just do it or? Was it just kind of set up? We're going to come into your deli and then start doing this. It's because really I think he just started it, and then all of a sudden it became a bit. Oh, no. no, that was all set up. It was all set up. Okay, well, but Rupert didn't want it. Like, and I think okay, right so because I thought in the beginning he was kind of irritated. Oh, with 100%. him coming in, no. Yeah, because okay, so his business blew up just from the construction and the renovation of the Ed Sullivan Theater. Like just that alone. Right, right, right. 
and suddenly there's a production going there and that just blew up his business right there just happened yeah just yeah because he couldn't i remember he was he was really well, busy was and he was going, oh, i can't letterman, handle all this stuff what letterman did in the beginning was he used the local merchants in the area uh, in Beat that the yeah yeah uh to be on the show like there was uh sarah jewel sarah jewel and mujibar yep uh yeah who were, uh, and, and, that's, the that's right he used to go to the well, different Sub places Nazi yeah. never was on that show no, no. Soup Nazi came into being because Spike, Spike Fierstein, who had been a writer on Letterman, used to go to the uh, Soup Nazi every day the, and yeah. get soup because it was the best soup you could get anywhere in Manhattan. No soup for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and but he was like that. Yeah. And Spierstein left mm -hmm. Letterman and went to go write for Seinfeld and wrote the episode The Soup Nazi. Yep. And it was based on going there every day for lunch. And I tell the story, I told it to Marjorie the other day, that um, Shecky and I went out to lunch when I went to see, pick up Shecky and we went to go to get lunch. We usually went around the block because there was a re restaurant we like to go to. And as we're going there, Shecky suddenly says, oh, look who's there. And he walks over and says, Spike. And it's Spike Fierstein. And P Spike Fierstein uh, was, he said, why, why, he said, why are you in New York? He said, I'm just here in business and things like that. He said, uh, so where are you going here? And he said, I'm going over to the Soup Nazi. He said, it's the first time I've been to his place since I wrote that episode. <laughs> and I want to see his reaction. To Did he get kicked out? <laughs> no, we we went on and had breakfast, lunch, but uh, uh, I'm sure it was an interesting meeting because this guy was that way. Mm -hmm. you know he was just uh, very serious about his soup <laughs> and um, he didn't like the soup nazi but it made him a fortune oh, yeah God. absolutely because everybody uh, came to new york and wanted to go to the soup kitchen i think it was called um and um everybody wanted to go there you know i went over there once had a soup got a lobster bisque terrific it's incredible but he wasn't there, and so I could, you know, just hand them my money. You really <laughs> had to hand him his, your money, move over to the next two point, steps to the left, <laughs> yeah, and then get your soup, you know. And uh, it's like George on that show goes, "There's no bread, no <laughs> soup for you, no <laughs> soup for you, no bread, no soup." Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, but uh, uh, you know. It's it's, um, it, it's kind of a wonderful history down there. It was great the way that he used a Letterman used people in the neighborhood, you yeah. know, and made them stars. You know, yeah. Yeah. Mujibar, What was the, what was the name of the place? I can't even remember. Rock was, America. Rock America. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they used to sell like everything from you know. Statue of Liberties with a thermometer in it, you know. <laughs> well, it's it's always made me want to go have a sandwich at Rupert's place when I if I ever go out there, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and they're great. They're and great. That, you know, it gave Rupert a business he never thought he would have. Right. Totally. You know? Yeah, he so, calls it life changing. He's the most grateful person you'll ever meet. Um, what I like to say about Rupert is like God took the word kind and made it into a human being. Like he's so so kind. You can and kind of tell, yeah. Years, even after Dave retired or left the Late Show, um, I mean, every single day, people coming in and taking selfies with him, and 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 he's so patient, telling the same story over and over and over again every day to new people. Um, yeah. Well, that's he, kind he of really part of the stuff. that's kind of part of the business because they're coming in to buy a sandwich or something, and yeah. you give them a little story along with it. That's the the, the, the people pass that along to somebody else. I mean, I met Rupert G. He was such a nice guy. Blah 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 blah. You know, yeah, good business. It's just makes good. the sandwich and, taste better. Huh? And David Letterman gave the license of uh, the Late Show with David Letterman uh, likeness and license. So Rupert has continually sold Late Show with David Letterman T-shirts all the way up till now. Dave mm. gave that to him when he retired, which was oh nice a gift. Yeah, very, very nice. Yeah, there are things about Dave that nobody really knows, but Dave ha has the ability, ha had the ability, has the ability, I would imagine, for a great amount of kindness. Yeah, and generosity. Uh, Absolutely. And generosity. Yeah. Yeah. But he doesn't want anybody to know it. Well, he stopped in at a car friend's of ours out here in California not too long ago. 
an old car builder out here in California. He stopped in there to say hi and didn't tell anybody, just stopped in and yeah, yeah, visited him. He, he was uh, uh, Ian Russell, I believe it was. Yeah, yeah. well, it looks like we can kind of run out of time here, but uh, it's always good to talk to you. Uh, we have, uh, we have it's a little lighter group of people today, but that's fine, you know. Uh, some weeks we were jammed with folks and other days we are at times we aren't, but, uh, first of all, I guess I should say goodbye to Marjorie, Marjorie. <laughs> For a and, minute. Good night, you know, Alex. You know, you, know, you, know, <laughs> you know what I like about this show? I like the fact that we have a lot of women on it. If you think about Mandy was here, you know, not enough. <laughs> Well, Not enough. I agree. Get your girlfriend to on. call. You know, just make sure I know ahead of time because I don't want to see some name I never saw before in my life, and then put it on and have it be two guys having sex with each other. No. Yeah. Well, you know. Don't give many ideas. It, 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 no, I won't. No, I just don't answer those. I I can't do what I do on the other show. What I do on the other show is I yeah. go to my, my camera and just put that on when I go to somebody I don't know. Mm. So if it is one of those, I just, it never gets on the air. But here I can't do that because this is going directly, right? Mm. Anyway, let me thank uh, Paula for being here and Charlene and uh, Mandy, who's not here now any longer. Uh, no, she's still alive, folks. She's <laughs> late. She just had to go early. <laughs> No longer uh, with us. Thanks Bad to Len Frisco. Len, always great having you here. Charlie, a little quiet. Wait a minute. What does your shirt say? The root of the root the equals root four, uh, equal. irrational number. <laughs> it's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. It's yeah. too scientific for me. Uh, Mike Chisholm, thank you. Have a good time down here. Love you guys. Yeah. And um, uh, I keep thinking that's a long way for you to come because you were over on the other coast. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a big trip for a for a little, little thing. We wanted to stay longer, but we just, Candy and I couldn't make yeah, it well, happen. Sometime when you get down here, you should come have some dinner with us. You know, That was the original plan was that I wanted to make it a big thing, but yeah, we just couldn't do it at this time, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. And it happened. Huh? What? It yeah. happened very quickly. It just, yeah. it just kind of. Have a good trip, Mike, and of course, Thanks. our friend Kevin. Always great to have you here, and uh, everybody, give a big wave. Oh, wait a, minute. <laughs> wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Before we sign off, we have to sign off as you all wave goodbye. And our good friend Edward Berger says, "That's all, folks." Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Alex.